Voilà. Hop. Bonjour. Hello, everybody. Bonjour, bonjour. Thanks. Thank you very much for joining us today on the Saturday tour, which is exceptionally on a Sunday. Yes. Yesterday was a very important day for many of our American friends. It was Independence Day, so we decided that it's best to leave you uh, off for the day. And so for this Sunday night, I am joined by my great friend and really great guide, Florent. Bonjour, Hello. Florent. Bonjour. Bonjour, everybody. We are in the very, very center of Paris. And it's a little bit windy, but we will be mostly up the beaten path. So that means that we won't have too many people. And also um, that we will have um, very, very little noise. Uh, I'm just going to check that you can hear us well. Um, and I see that I think we're good. Well, fine. I'm actually checking on my other phone. And yes, so everybody can hear us. Wonderful. And uh, just sorry for the wind noise. It will soon uh, be over. So, Florent, thank you once again for being our guide uh, for today. It's a pleasure. You've decided to take us to do the Im Mission Impossible. Yes. To show us secret hidden gems of Paris. In the very heart of Paris. Because, guys, we are not lost somewhere away from the city center of Paris. We are right in the first district the premier arrondissement. Let's check a little bit uh, where we are uh, around us. So right here is the famous Royal Palace, the great Hotel du Louvre. And what you see just behind here is the world's most famous museum, the Louvre. So you're telling us, Laurent, that you know secret places, yes. amazing stories, yes. right here that nobody knows about. Exactly. I call that the hidden gems of Paris. And it starts in that direction, in the direction right, of a that. beautiful building named Palais Royal. When you hear Palais Royal, in English, it's Royal Palace. It's actually a building which hasn't haven't had this name at the origin, as it was a place for the Cardinal de Richelieu. You know, the bad guy in the so, Three Musketeers. Just today, wow, my finger is as big as the, as the porch. Uh, right now, today, we call it the Conseil d'État, right? So yes, Conseil d'État is um, the higher, it's like the Supreme Court of Justice for public law in France. So it's kind of a VIP area. Uh, in that building, you also have the Conseil Constitutionnel, the Constitutional Court, and we will see also the Ministry of Culture of France. But we have a royal palace. At the origin, it was named the Cardinal Palace. But when the Cardinal de Richelieu died in 1642, he gave his palace to the royal family. He gave his palace or yes. he sold it? No, he gave it. Wow. He gave it. And 1642, the Cardinal Palace became the Palais Royal, the royal palace. One year later, the kings of France died. Louis XIII and the queen, Anne of Austria, moved to the royal palace to raise her two sons, Louis and Philippe. Louis, you know him. He's Louis the Fourteenth. Yeah, the Sun King. The Sun King. And so he was raised here. He was raised here. The Louvre and not Tuileries in Versailles. Was no, the Versailles didn't exist at the time. All right. But around the Louvre, you had the Tuileries Palace, but he preferred the Palais Royal and its garden. So, so, so they had the Louvre right across this square. Yes. And what was the Louvre then? The Louvre at the time was already a place for the art, but you had the Palace of the Tuileries, which had been built in the 1560s. So it was a royal house, but she preferred Palais Royal, which was way smaller. Nowadays in the Louvre, you have 407 rooms. It was not that big at the time, but she preferred the Palais Royal. So they had a royal palace and crossed the streets to have another one. Exactly. Not bad. Not bad. So it's a pretty nice place. And in, uh, yes, a few years later, uh, the wife and daughters of the deposed king of England, Charles I, moved in Palais Royal. Wait, 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 wait. You're saying that 
an English king who yeah. lived in the French royal no. palace? His wife. He was deposed in England, okay. and his wife. What does it mean? He was deposed. Uh, he was beheaded. Ooh. Yeah. So they started that before we did. Yes, one century before. All right. And uh, actually, his wife and his daughter settled in the Palais Royal, and a few years later, uh, Philippe, the brother of Louis, uh, married Henrietta of England, and the Palais Royal became the place to be. Wow. Believe me, the Duchess, she was the Duke of Orleans, and the Duchess built ornamental garden, and it was a place for the creme de la creme, the best Let part of the French society. So let's, let's, let's go let's check go. these gardens. Let's go check. I didn't, I didn't know that. So the English, they cut off the head of their king. Yes. But not the wife or the no. child. And so the wife and the daughter moved to France. They moved here to France. Like many people during the revolution, of, during the French Revolution, members of nobility moved to England. You know, when you have a revolution, you just move to the neighbor country. And exactly the same. They moved here. And yes, we are going to... Uh, to see a place that visitors of Paris often miss, the secret place, because it's hidden. Talking about revolution, uh, yesterday was a pretty big day for our American friends. Yes. Uh, Happy Florent Independence Day. Knows everything about American history too. So he's told me a lot about the uh, uh, Independence Day and the American Revolution. Mm -hmm. So during the revolution in England, royalty moved to France. Well, during the French Revolution, French royalty moved to England, but during the American Revolution, yes, what happened? Well, during the American Revolution, it was not on the English, so it was not on the homeland, so it was on the, on the colonies. It was on the colonies, and the French king, Louis XVI, sent uh, Lafayette, sent uh, French soldiers, the French Navy, and finally the French help with the Battle of Yorktown. Uh, lead, led to the independence of the United States. So this is Louis XVI. Here, Louis XVI was in Versailles. Here, not, um, not here in the center of Paris. No, back back. but in Versailles. But that's how we became friends exactly. with Americans Actually, by fighting the revolution. Against the English. Yes, so, so you guys, uh, while we're walking a little bit to a very nice place, uh, tell us in the comments if, if you had, um, if I mean, first of all, where you're from, because not everybody is from the US. Uh, and if you have had a great uh, day yesterday, what, where were you and what did you do for 4th of July? So I'd like to show you a very original metro entrance. Now we will enter the garden very soon. You can see this building, is, this work of art is a metro entrance. It's from the year 2000. It was made by a French contemporary artist, Jean-Marie uh, 2000, so just, 2000, just 20 years old. Yeah, it's made with glass from Murano, uh, wow. the famous uh, glass from Venice, and uh, it's meant to celebrate the nightlife. We call it kiosque de noctambule, like noctambule is like a night bird, a night bird's kiosk. And personally, it took me years to realize it was a metro entrance, but it's in front of a very famous place. When you turn around, over there. Oh yes, the famous Comédie Française. You can see La Comédie Française. La Comédie Française, French comedy, is actually the most famous theater of France, even the best one. And the oldest theatrical troupe in the world is there since 1680. Still, still today. Still today, the oldest theatrical troupe, the former troupe of Molière. Let's get closer. Maybe we can uh, see a little bit the inside. Um, I see. So, what did you do, guys? Did you do for uh, so Ginger and Ken? How are you guys in Florida? Darren, hi Darren. Nice to have you again in Fullerton, California. I hope I did not mis mispronounce it. And you can guys see us trying yeah. to sneak in the uh, Comédie Française. So it's still named after Richelieu. I see after... Comédie Française. Richelieu, yes, Richelieu, the one who had this place built. Exactly. And these yeah. and these are all the the schedule, but it you can see that normally it's every day, but that's February. That is to say, uh, unfortunately, the uh, theater is closed yeah. since uh, a few months. But otherwise, you can see every evening of the month they are playing here. 
Molière even died on stage in who? 1673. Molière. Who was Molière? Molière is like English people have Shakespeare. In yes. France, we have Molière. He was a theater play writer, a theater play uh, actor. And in 1673, he was playing for the first time the imaginary ill man. And he had a stroke on an armchair. And while he's playing. While he was playing, a man who was supposed to die, but he really died. He had a stroke. He was brought to his place a few blocks away and he died in the night. So today we have an important relic in Comédie Française. We still have the armchair where Molière died. So the guy did pretty much everything. Yes. He wrote the plays and he was he, playing. He was acting in it. Yes. And he actually died on stage. On stage. But a perfect fate for an actor. So we guys, I'm, I'm switching modes here because we're now entering the Palais Royal. Royal. So I'm going to film the name because we, we pronounce it with our French accent. So Palais Royal, Royal Palace, but here we say the Palais Royal. So it's this garden, it's pretty big, that we are actually going to see. It then once again, it's just, um, you know, 30 yards away from the Louvre. Yes. And ooh, we ooh, hear, ooh, 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 ooh. I think we've passed something here on the ground. So you can read N, North, S, South. That's the former Paris Meridian. Okay. That's the former Paris uh, Meridian. Now we use the Greenwich uh, English uh, Meridian, but there was one French and Arago. It was placed uh, to remember the scientist uh, Arago and you find them all over Paris. You even find some in the Louvre, and as they are uh, collectible, some people even stole them. Mm. So, but they replaced it. They, no, no, no. So now, welcome so to now. The, it's hard to know where's the north from the south, but oh my god! Welcome now to the courtyard wow, wow. of honor of Palais Royal. Wow, wow, wow! That's that is pretty amazing. I know that many of our viewers today have been to Paris before. If you have been on a tour with us, my private Paris, I hope your guide has taken you there. If not, you have then, to come back. Yeah, you have to come back and write the name of the guide in the comments so we, we have a, a chat. Because this is one of the least famous sites in Paris, yet one of the most famous for tour guides. Right? Exactly. So you can see we have over there the Ministry of Culture of France. Okay, pretty nice location. Conseil d'État, we saw it, the State Council. State Council. Over there we have Conseil Constitutionnel, the Constitutional Court. That reminds us and that we are in a VIP area. Yeah, very VIP. Well, of course, because we are here. Exactly. But even more, you can see around us a lot of columns. You guys see? Up, 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 up. You can see the columns. It's a contemporary work of art since... Yeah. Since 1986, it's a work of art which provoked a big controversy, many lawsuits, people didn't understand. But you have 260 columns, it's named The Two Plateaus, from a French artist named Daniel Buren. And it's made of? It's made of marble. So the marble you see is white marble from Carras. That is to say, the best marble you can have for a sculpture. For example, Michelangelo was using marble of Carras to make his statues in the Sixteen Chapel. And so white marble from Italy. Black marble from the Pyrenees, ah. the mountain where actually Bertrand is coming from, and the Stuck border. Into my heart now. <laughs> and uh, the yes, border between France and Spain. So kids love to play here. Yeah, I guess because it's a bit late for kids now, but during the day you see lots of kids, and it's we're, a we're all for, kids, right? Oh yes, and heaven for photographers as well. You, but, you, Florent. Um, sorry, but. You, you are a great photographer. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't know if I'm a great, but I love to take photography. <laughs> he's, yes. He's too shy. And have been many times here. Every time you come here, when it's sunny, you see uh, photo shootings. You see another photo shootings over there. Sometimes it's with models. Sometimes it's wedding photography because it's truly one of the most beautiful parts of Paris. So, uh, we, so you, you, take, you come here to take photographs. Yes. And is it just for, for fun or you do this uh, also professionally? You do it I've done it, yes, professionally. Yeah. So not only today we have a great tour guide, but also a great photographer. Guys, I'm, I'm playing dumb here because I know Florent very well. So I know he's uh, very, very talented 
with his uh, camera. He's he's being shy. You can you can see here that he's starting to uh, to blush a little bit. But don't hesitate to uh, tell us, uh, ask for a great session because of photography with Florent. Maybe at the end of a tour of the Louvre, that could yes, be a great combination. Exactly. The two hours in the Louvre, one hour here, and my God, there's something happening there. Yeah, people I are hear, dancing. I hear music and. I prefer this work of art because before 1986, it, it was a parking lot for the ministry. You mean right here? Right here, a parking lot full of cars. And they replaced it with this. So a controversial work of art, but that replaced a uh, terrible. And, and so I don't know if you guys can see, but they are actually of very different heights. Uh, so you were saying that kids love it here because they can jump. Let's see. Did I turn off the microphone no i think we're right fine. now all right so yeah so we see kids playing around can you can you go on these ones no i'm too no you're too old or too old. i'm too small no you <laughs> know so, yeah, we're not we're not the best combination for this. but guys um we're, we're, we're going to lower our, our voice a little bit because uh there is music being played and maybe you can see uh, here on the uh, uh, on the left side, there are couples dancing. Seems like tango. This is why the photographers love the place. You have a lot uh, of yeah. perspective. Yeah, you have. Uh, it's not very sunny today, but uh, a nice light. And we are now uh, going to see the famous gardens of the Palais Royal. Gardens of Palais Royal, simply the place to be in the 1700s. In the 1700s, people used to say Paris is capital of France, but the capital of Paris is Palais Royal. And once again, so 1700s, yes. the court is not in Paris anymore. No, no they the, are in Versailles. They are in Versailles. But here it is the place to be still. Yes. Because? Because first, uh, Louis XIV gave the property, deeded the property to his brother in 1682. Okay. In 1692, sorry. 10 years after he moved to Versailles. And the Duke of Orleans, it became the house of the Orleans family, a very powerful family. Yes. And uh, for example, uh, in 1780, the buildings that we are going to see, let's go to see this were built. Oh, no. Okay, so everything there is here on the left, that's the original Royal Palace. So the Royal Palace was over there. The columns you see are uh, remnants from uh, arcades that were built in 1830, where it was like a shopping center, the Gallery of Orleans, and they destroyed the uh, covered uh, market in 1930. You, you mean, let's, let, let's walk just a little bit more. You, um, you say that there where people are actually dancing now? Yes. This used to be a covered market? It used to be the best one of Paris. Yes, we are going to see in that tour that some a very modern concept were invented in Palais Royal, like the ancestors of the commercial, of the uh, shopping centers, as well as the ancestors of the first modern restaurant. Because yes, in the 1700s, right there, it was open to the public in 1784. Open wow. to the public and 145 boutiques under the arcades. So a market, Yes, restaurants. So you have 145 boutiques, you have restaurants, you have um, salon, salons, you have hair salons, you have a lots of uh, kiosks for refreshment, you have the uh, first restaurants, and you have the, we are going to explore that, the arcades, the arcades where people could go shopping protected from the rain protected from the mud, but also protected from the horse-drawn carriages. It was dangerous to be a pedestrian in Paris at the time. Under the arcades. You, you mentioned, sorry, you, you mentioned refreshments. I see here one of the uh, fountains. It's not the typical uh, fountain like the one we saw in Montmartre. It's yeah, not the it's typical earlier. Paris fountain. Yes. Uh, but still drinkable. If, if we press here, up, up, up we can actually... We it's drinkable. Well, we're going to see if, if it's drinkable for uh, for dogs as well. <laughs> hello, hello. It's, it's like a free shower for, uh, for dogs. So, in this place, I'm just 
yep. sorry guys, I'm a little bit uh, uh, impressed by the beauty of these roses. Yes, here in Palais Royal, they change the flowers four times a year. And because you it's totally kidding. enclosed, there is a little bit less wind and it's always a little bit warmer in Palais Royal than in the rest of Paris. Because there's no wind. Because there's a little bit of wind, but because it's enclosed, the four sides have buildings. It's actually like kind of a microclimate. I had read that and I believe it. You are, in, are you a gardener also on top of being a guide no. and a photographer? I'm a terrible gardener. But uh, I, I have been to your uh, balcony, so I, I knew the answer. Yeah. <laughs> but this is pretty amazing. I mean, we are right in the middle of Paris, uh, protected from the wind, and there is this little garden. Now, it's not a private garden. Is it? It's not a private garden. It's a public garden. But that's the heart of the, that, uh, uh, how to say, the place to be in the 1780s until 1837. You have a lot of cafes, you have a lot of restaurants, you had sophisticated conversation here. You had- also Just like us right now. Like us right now, yeah. during the day, because during the night, it was something different. Not like us right now. Not like, not like right now. It Ooh, was a uh, place wait, for- Wait, 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 wait. Uh, if you guys have children too close to the screen, uh, this is the moment where we're talking about another side of uh, Paris yeah. lifestyle. Oh, Ex lifestyle, or actually the Palais Royal. Uh, Palais Royal lifestyle, actually, yes. So let's, it was, uh, now you guys know you're responsible for, your, for what you're going to hear. So, yes, yeah, a place of shameless debauchery, that is to say, ah. like uh, libertines, uh, off-duty soldiers, and a lot of prostitutes during the night. During the day, the high society, the aristocracy, but during the night, the thing is, no nope. police was allowed in here. So no police, intimacy, people with money and a taste for debauchery. And gambling. And gambling. And gambling, debauchery and gambling. Could we say it's some kind of a Las Vegas of yeah, Paris? It was kind of Las Vegas, yes, in the red light district at the same time. And all of this in the property of the King's brother. Exactly. Ooh. Actually, on the, the Orleans family, that Orleans. was originating from the King's brother. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. because in the 1700s, generation that passed, yes. now they're cousins. But still the same family, yeah. So still, the Orleans family mm -hmm. do not rule the country, but they rule the vices of, of Palais Royal. Of the Royal Palace. It was still, no, it was no, no longer called Royal Palace, was it? No, no, it was still named uh, Royal still Palace. Named. So these guys, they have tons of money. They have the very famous name. They are a branch of the royal family, but absolutely no responsibility. Am I right? Yeah. So they just spend their time gambling, having fun. Uh, and we, well, you guys don't know uh, our uh, explanation for all of, all of it. And right here in the center of Paris. Yes. How convenient. Yes. Can now, you see? You want to show? I want to show you something. Switch. I hope you can see it well. It's right here. I'm going to point it. I'm going to try to zoom. Usually it's not. It's yeah. Not very stable, but but we do it. I think. No, I think we're fine. Oh. Yes. Voila. So right here, you see a small cannon. Yes. That's something typical from Palais Royal. Okay. It was installed in 1786. 1786. Okay, so we're before the French Revolution. Yes, three years before, a clockmaker installed a noon cannon. What does it mean? A noon cannon? Yes. Like noon? Like noon. Like middle, like, mid, middle of the day. Exactly. During the middle of the day, when the sky was not cloudy, it was on the former meridian of Paris, the rays of the sun would ignite black powder that was inside the cannon, and through a magnifying glass, there would be an explosion every you're, day at noon. You're and kidding me. Just the sun ray will make this cannon work through a magnifying glass and a small amount of black powder, and you would have dozens of people gathering here to set their clocks because it was noon, and it was the that, only way to know it was noon. That can't be true. Really? You come here, and at noon, well, obviously on a sunny day. On a sunny day, yeah. And the cannon well, would explode. Sadly, le petit canon, as we call it, the small cannon, was stolen in 1998 and was then replaced by this one four years later. That doesn't work anymore. However, there was written in Latin at the base of the canon, I only count happy hours. <laughs> well, 
I think we 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 got the the point that this was the place for yeah. Uh, as you see, at the hours over there too. Uh, you see, lovers uh, love the intimacy of this yeah, garden. We're, we'll try not to steal their intimacy, but this is exactly, guys, what we're talking about. Exactly. If you're on a date, so not like us right now. You know, no offense, Flo. Sorry. Uh, but this is the best place to take your beloved one in uh, Paris. And once again, just behind the Louvre. Just behind the Louvre. And it's free, right? It's free, yeah. But it's also a private property now, so that is to say that uh, around 8.30, 9 o'clock, they, they close the garden. But the building you see around are actually uh, privately owned, and uh, you can live at Palais Royal if you, you want. If you can afford it. You mean all of this, what we see here? Yeah. That is actually private apartments. Private apartments. And what we're going to do, we're going to go... Uh, going to one of them. No, I'm, uh, I don't have the access. I'm sorry. I'm, but I'm going to show you their arcades. Because I said earlier that the modern shops started here. That's a, true. A shop with a long glass window, exterior window, and selling uh, fine art, jewelry, furniture it was a place for the wealthy elite to be seen so that's, and to shop so that's what we're going to see next i just want guys to share because there is an amazing light right now i'm going to zoom a little bit but this is i mean with the flowers a bit of the sun uh, setting the statue the columns and the music i mean it could not be a better day to do this yeah Oh, wow. I really like Palais Royal. So, oh. would you say that the best moment is to come now at the end uh, of the day? Oh, I like to go there at noon when I have the Louvre. Yep. I just buy a sandwich over there and I go eat here. Parisians love to go eating here uh, during the day. Uh, you have lots of offices around and uh, you're going to see they like to relax on the chairs around the water pond in the center. And, um, well, it's a typical French garden, huh? Jardin à la Française. It's geometrical. What, yeah. What, what, is, what are the principles of a, of a French garden? A French garden is um, geometrically organized. That is to say the path Straight lines. Straight lines. Yeah, well, like, like the one we can see right now on the screen. Exactly. The trees are netly cut. They are lined up. Yeah, that's true. Look at these guys. You know? Up. Well, that's us. You have it. Up now. All the trees are perfectly aligned exactly it's a little bit like our haircut exactly like <laughs> a very fresh one for me not my beard but my hair yes and um and uh, yes a water pond in the center where parisian like to and, go and always sand right yes French garden sand. yeah you don't walk on grass you no no pavement sand. no no grass just sand yeah yes. and you will see it's popular here too and fu and fountains often fountains and in the center fountain like chairs. a water pond in the center so there is one right now maybe you guys can uh, hear the sound of the of the water we have a water show just for us well i mean us and a few other uh, parisians it's just perfect now is this one of the pumps where you can um, put little boats and play with it no not here not here no it's more in luxembourg garden and sometime in the tuileries garden but it's definitely a place where it's very hard to get a chair in summer. Yeah, as but... soon as you have someone leaving a chair, you see other people almost running to get that chair and then bring it where they want. Because it's a public chair. And sometimes it's a chair for two. Yeah. So what we're going to do, we're going to have a look inside the arcades. So which direction are we going to? So we are going now in uh, this gallery, Montpensier. Look at this guy. Oh, wow. How the trees are all pruned. Maybe we have gardeners. Let's let's do a quick uh, survey, uh, guys. I see that we are what twenty five right now. Twenty five with us. It's it's pretty nice to have twenty five people on a on a Sunday Sunday morning for most of you, I guess. Uh, but if you guys are uh, gardeners, let us know in the in the comments if you uh, like French garden, if you garden yourself, and uh, we can keep talking a little bit about, uh, about this. But we are about to actually we are go going away from the garden uh, under the arcades. Under the arcades, where you could find 145 boutiques uh, in the late 1700s, early 1800s. Wow, wow, wow. So and so it's a every, pretty nice place to live, yes. Each arcade is framed by a pilaster like this yeah. and a Corinthian uh, column. Wow, wow, wow. And 
then this goes on and on. So uh, this building are from 1780, 84. 84, it was open to the public. You could find the aristocracy, you could find the middle class, the lower order. And as I said, you could be here to be seen, you could be here to go to the restaurant and Let's just see. like today. Let, just like today. <laughs> you have a, a Cafe Kitsune where I have, was having a coffee just yesterday. And you're going to see that it's pretty big. It's way longer than it seems. It's like an optical illusion. And, and it's paved with mosaic. And it's paved with mosaic. Very nice motif with flowers again. This looks like a little bit like Fleur de Lis. Wow. It's like endless. So you can see you are lo we're looking towards north right now. And That's if you turn cool. around, you will see it's very long. We are yeah. looking down south. And there's the same on the other side. Yes, same on the other side. And How many stories did you say? 145 shops? at the time. 145. And it was for the Parisian something extremely new because at this period of time in 1780s, you didn't have sidewalk in the streets. You had the mud, you had the holes on carriages. Mm -hmm. Here, you could go shopping or window shopping safely. And in France, we don't say window shopping. We say lèche vitrine, yeah, which literally true. means window leaking. Yeah. So it's not slang. That's really the way we that's, call it, that's window true. leaking. That's true, guys. We don't say we go window shopping. We say we go lick the windows. Because exactly. People are stuck on it. And you get the idea. So hundreds of stores, hundreds of stores, theaters, 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 and uh, all of this is still happening today. So today, yes, you have cafe. It's not as popular. Huh? It was the place to be in the 1700s. Now it's pretty quiet, but you still find cafes, restaurants, uh, two theaters, um, like Cafe Kitsune just over there. Uh, Sometimes there is one shop over there. They sell like clocks from the 1700s and there is okay. no price tag. <laughs> which is not a good sign yeah, yeah, and yeah. pretty pretty expensive it would be cheaper to have a, a noon cannon exactly i would prefer and <laughs> uh what we're going to do now we are just going over there to see uh, a very old restaurant one of the first restaurants of paris and we will see that the restaurant concept was born here yeah that's that's what you were telling me while we were preparing this story is that uh, today paris when you think paris when you see paris uh you picture paris in your mind you think cafes, restaurants, etc. So this is where it all started. All this cafe exactly. society, yeah. all this restaurant society. Exactly. And, oops, sorry. and this started, what, right so, after the French Revolution? Before, just, just before, before, but it has a link with the revolution because it was the way for uh, egalitarianism. What happened? In the late 1600s, early 1700s, travelers in Paris, coming from England or Europe, used to say there are two bad things about Paris. There is no street light and there is no good food. The food is disgusting. What? Yes. Who said that? English, of course, and Europeans. Mm. And the thing is, when you were, you were not going out to have dinner in the early 1700s, the only people going out for dinner were uh, the travelers. And yeah, because other people were having dinner in their own at home. home. And if you wanted to have dinner or lunch, you would go to an inn or a tavern. And in the inn and the taverns, you didn't have your own table. It was collective table and you wouldn't choose your dish. There was one dish that was not supposed to be good. One the same dish that for was everyone. Same for everyone. With plat du jour. Plat du jour, dish of the day. And it was not supposed to be good, but to feed you well. That is why most of the time the, uh, the plat du jour, they are like stew or something like that. That can be uh, kept for uh, hours and not... Uh, cooked right then. Yeah, plat du jour today is a pl dish that they do especially for the day. But back in the days, in, a, in one dish, one table, in the 1760s, you have in 1760 you have here le restaurant, Let's le see. grand vefou. Uh, let's get closer. Let's get closer, and I hope you will see well inside because the decoration is really beautiful. Before, all right, V E F O U R, the first restaurant of Paris. So today it says brasserie, restaurant, and salle de société, which means you know high society meeting room. 
let's we cannot sneak in we've tried but we don't have the keys so we're just going to film we're going to lick the windows i oh, yeah, exactly <laughs> that's a perfect place for that and wow wow wow, wow, wow. look at this uh pull out so what's happened it's all perfectly decorated is it decorated in the style of the of late the time 1700s? of the early 1800s yeah and victor hugo balzac lots of famous writers just together here I prefer not to show you the menu um, and the price. Like Why the, not? Ah, okay, the there is uh, one uh, menu for like 315 euros. Okay, so what enough. happened in the 1760s, they had the idea to create a place where you would go and eat well, having your own table and a menu with a lot of different dishes. It was something totally new. Before that, you were eating bad outside, except in Versailles. So that means instead of having this large table that you share, you have your own table, so more intimate. Yes. Instead of only plat du jour, dish of the day, you Different. can pick in the menu what you want to eat. Exactly. And all of this in a very beautiful, very well decorated uh, location. Exactly. Because before that, if you wanted to eat well, you would have to be invited at the court in Versailles. Mm -hmm. or to be invited in the nobles, in the uh, private mansion of someone of the nobility, they have their own cook. But if you were not invited, that's true. Yeah. In the 1760s, egalitarism, even the ordinary people can eat well. And this was a big success. Still working today. Still working today. In the year 1834, you had 2,000 restaurants in Paris. Now, in English, in German, in Spanish, in a lot of different language, we use the word restaurant. What does that mean? Yeah. Restaurant. That's... Restaurant comes from the French verb to restore, to refresh, to restore yourself, to make yeah, you feel true. well. And it was like a kind of consommé at the time, kind of soup, that was named the restorative bouillon. So the restorative mm -hmm. restaurant, that is why we use the word restaurant today all over the world. So you guys back home, next time you go to the restaurant, if restaurants are already uh, open uh, for you, you have an amazing story from my friend Florent here that the word restaurant and the concept of it come from the gardens of the Palais Royal. And around the roof. Yes. And around the roof. Well, thank you for that. Yeah, welcome. So you I learned it from a professor in Harvard. So it yeah? must be true, yes. You went to Harvard? Uh, I have been there, but I didn't study there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to switch the uh, the camera because this is actually pretty uh, pretty beautiful. All these arcades. Now, all the rest, the the the, the shops are closed because we are Sunday, Sunday. night. So obviously, uh, it's not the busiest day uh, for them. But otherwise, all these stores are open every day. And there is one you were mentioning that is uh, selling. Uh, clocks from the 1700s. I'm going to try uh, six, to... Uh, 17, 1700s, yes. Wow. So this is one of them. And the other one, you can see guys that they don't agree on the time. Uh, yeah. I guess I guess they, they, they haven't been there. Wow. This one, it says here that Louis it's a clock from the time of Louis the 16th. So the 1770s, 80s, and... Uh, Sorry. There is no price tag. So, of course not. Why would you care about the price? Well, this is a very, very, very beautiful place. Le Palais Royal. Once again, I'm going to film Domaine National. You guys can forget about that part. We never say that. Uh, we only say the end of it. So, Palais Royal, which starts here. That's where we started our tour. Yep. Then you have the Louvre right there. You go to the side of it, don't be shy, go behind the gate, I mean, and then you have the Cologne, and then the garden, and right now we're here about to make our way out. Exactly, because if the concept of modern shops was invented in the Palais Royal, you had, for example, long exterior glass window that was totally new at the time, in the early 1800s, they created something new. We are going to see pretty soon the most emblematic of the, what we call in French, passage couvert, ah, in right. English, covered passage. We will see the ancestors of the modern 
shopping centers. So, so we're going to leave the Palais Royal. Okay. So and let's... moving north, we have a very beautiful light. And yeah, it's see. true. There is there is a beautiful light. It, yeah. it was it was almost raining when we started the tour, and now it's all uh, all pretty. So here there is one of these covered passage, but sadly it's closed on the Sunday. Ah, uh, yeah. But it's it's a very small one, right? It's a very it's the shortest one in Paris. Okay. So we so we're going to we are going to go, see go around the corner, just around the corner. We're going to see Galerie Vivienne and Florent. The, these buildings we we see here, yes, uh, they are as old as the Palais Royal. Yes, older. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, it's like seventeen hundred easily, easily. So we are 16, in the 1700s. 16, I would say early 1700s, late 1600s. Oh, oh, oh. And I like the Rue de Beaujolais, if you like yeah. Beaujolais wine. As if you don't like Beaujolais wine. I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big fan of Beaujolais Nouveau, the new Beaujolais. Yeah, but the older one, you like. You're a man of good taste, Laurent, yeah. aren't you? So what's well, going on here? There's a um, renovation. It's uh, the National Library, uh, Bibliothèque Nationale, which is under renovation for years now. Yeah. So it's uh, we're not going in that direction. We yeah. are going now to a place named Galerie Vivienne. So maybe we can cross here. So we have open light. Or yeah. Yes. Let me check. There's no one behind us. Okay. There's not so much traffic these days in here. Oh, it's, it's the end of it. You know what? Day. I'm going to switch because now, unless we hide the sun behind. Okay. Voila. So now we are going to uh, visit something typical from the early 1800s, the covered passages. So we're switching century. Yes. We've, we've talked about royalty being raised in uh, the Palais Royal, then leaving Paris to Versailles, then using the Palais Royal for fun and entertainment and all the pleasures of the night. We've heard about the concept of restaurants that was created in that very place. Yes. With the idea that not only the aristocracy should have access to uh, great, great food and fine dining. And so now we're switching to the early 1800s. Yes. So we're no longer in, uh, are we what, under? Uh, 1826. 1826. Yeah, 1826. So the covered passage it's a brand new concept from the early 1800s and it has some characteristics what is a covered passage we will see that the covered passage is a connection between two streets you will see that you have glass ceiling and at the ground floor shops that is to say people could go shopping protected from the rain from the mud from the horses and you would find tailors, you would find printing, you would find restaurants, one store, you would find everything and very uh, good location. That's why it's so emblematic Galerie Vivienne, because it's located right between the Palais Royal and in that direction, the stock exchange. So it was one of the most successful. We had in the 1850s, 100 covered passage in Paris. Now, 100? 100. Now we have only 17 that are still open to the public. So that's that's the name, the that's Galerie, Galerie Vivienne. Vivienne. Yeah. Early 1800s. 1820, built in 1823 and inaugurated in 1826. Wow. You have a lot of precision. Uh, and uh, we can see here that is open uh, every day, but it is closed after 8.30 because it, there's actually uh, people living above us. Living above, and it's a private, it's a, it's a private place. Wow, wow, wow. And we are really lucky to have nobody. Yeah. You will see that this is, for example, Bistro Vivienne, an address that I recommend. I really had very good lunch here. Bistro I'm gonna show you Vivienne. Easy, yeah. easy to remember, guys. Bistro, you all know that word. Vivienne, the name of the gallery. Bistro Vivienne. And now Bertrand. It's really nice, huh? Yes, nice. And all these books that, of course, we read while we eat. <laughs> now I'm going to show you a place that Bertrand would love to go to. Yeah. Look at the size of these bottles. Oh my God. The bottles wow, wow, you wow. see, like this one, is a 12 can, liter. Can, can you uh, uh, stand next to it so people actually. Wow. So we. Wow. 
wow, wow, wow. So these guys, <laughs> these are not your regular uh, butthole, and it's not a uh, you know a special effect. You say that this one is twelve liters. Twelve liters. It's like what eight gallon? No, no, no. It's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> Twelve twelve liters. It's it's like 15, uh, no, 18 bottles, 18 regular, 15 regular, wow. Yeah, or a lot. A lot. So oh, yeah. just to give a comparison, you can see the average bottle. Yeah, that's and the size, one. the double one. And the huge ones. These are the one, it's called Jéroboam, uh, right? Yes, okay. maybe, yes. It's a shop named Le Grand Frère. They are here for generations. Le grand fils and uh, le grand fille and fils, daughters and sons, founded in 1880. Wow. So it was first a grocery store, a candy store, and now only good wine and some snacks. Le grand. Yeah, I remember it used to say le grand père et fils, and now it's daughters yeah. and sons. Yes. Yeah. A bit of girl power in the wine business. So it's typical from the covered passage, you have a glass ceiling. So the glass ceiling is here to bring natural light yes. and protect from the elements. So it's doing its job perfectly well today. Yes. We have amazing lights. Because it starts to be, uh, I mean, it starts to be late. It's almost 8 p.m. So I know it's summertime, so the, the sun is still out. But this is amazing because the light is just perfect. It's going to be even better over there. And once again, just like in the Palais Royal, the soil Ground, sorry, the floors are made of mosaics. It almost looks like a, a Roman uh, villa or something like that. Mm -hmm. The mosaic is coming from Italy, actually. So it's there a good point. Go. There you go. And just there lived a very famous man oh, named yeah. Eugène Vidoc. I, I know what's coming. Eugène Vidoc lived there in 1840. This man is the father of modern criminology. He was the head of the police. And why was he a good police officer? because he was a former convict. He was a former convict, and with a squad of former convicts, he totally reorganized the police, and he's considered as the father of modern criminology. That is to say, this man was the head of the police, but he's also the man who, in 1840, opened the first private detective agency. Wait, 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 wait. Like, so this guy called Vidoc, he lives here, just behind you in 1840 so that means that he lives uh in not in the shops obviously but above maybe above. you guys you can see that through uh the glass actually above the gallery they are uh, regular apartments exactly okay and, and so this one is called vidoc and he is a policeman he was he was the head of the police of sûreté nationale after mm -hmm. he, he inspired many writers like victor hugo edgar Allan poe balzac and there have been many movies and books about him. He's a fam pretty famous character. And he created uh, his agency of private detective, like in 1840, that is to say, exactly 10 years before Pinkerton. You American know about Pinkerton. So it was the same, that's our French version of Pinkerton. So, and before being a policeman, he was a convict. He was a convict. Yeah, yes, like many years in jail. And he knows the world of uh, the people who don't respect the law. And that's why when it was... I love the way you, you uh, nicely uh, phrase this, the world of people who don't respect the law. You can say he was a gangster. Like he, a, he was kind of gangster. Yeah, yeah. Like, pardon my French, but he was very, pretty badass. Yeah, he knew, he, yeah, he knew the network, he knew the techniques, he knew yeah, how to do it. That's why he was actually, uh, he knew the, the network of the criminals and everything. And uh, yeah. So that, that would be a perfect uh, Scorsese movie if Scorsese yeah, exactly. was doing a French mafia movie from the 1800s. Yeah, there have been a, a movie with him with uh, Gérard Depardieu, you know, the French actor of France, uh, yeah, very of famous. And uh, I, I propose that yeah? we just were going to see that also one of the characteristics of the COVID passage is that they are beautifully ornamented. They're beautiful ornamentation, decoration, and all of them here are linked with uh, the trade, are linked with commerce, are linked with business. We're going to see, and you are lucky because this place, they just finished to repaint it like last year. It was in a terrible condition. Look at this, if it's not beautiful. It's just, yeah, it's true. They've done a great job. 
very, very, very fine job. So that, that's what you were mentioning, the... The decoration, I'm gonna show you then, this yeah. one. They're like, uh, it's very classic. Yeah, yes, they're yeah, neoclassic. And you can see it's very quiet now at the moment. It's also kind of quiet during the day. And yeah, it's so quiet. Uh, if, as soon as we start to speak, there's a lot of echo. So we're just going to let the two gentlemen there uh, oh, yeah. make their way so you can you know, still hear us. And it's full of stores. So not just uh, um, the wine shop and the bistro, but also regular shops. Regular shops, yes. Back in the days, you would find confectioners, cobblers, you would find uh, uh, bookstores. You still have a famous bookstore around the corner. And if you look at the decoration just over there, above, I don't know if you can see right here, you can see that everything, let me switch like yeah. zoom up. Yeah. Perfect. All these symbols are linked to trade because if you look carefully, you see, I'm going to show it to you just there, the Caducius of Mercury, who is the god of trade. Yeah. You have two horns of plenty on the side, and you have an anchor that symbolizes the naval trade, the maritime trade. So everything is linked with trade. This was the place to be in the early 1800s. Later, you had the renovation works of Baron Haussmann, and oh, this yeah. place became less and less popular. Because this place, to, to remind you guys, it became immensely popular. Yes. Uh, because... It was covered, and so you would keep your feet clean and dry. You would be in a safe environment because the gates out there were guarded. It's for pedestrian only. So you could go here and shop and dine and, you know, socialize uh, in a very safe way back when Paris was dirty and unsafe. Yes, actually, yes. Wow. And, and so today it's more luxurious uh, stores. Yes, kind of. A lot of fashion stores, and what do we have on the other side? Emilio Roba Studio, Flowers of Illusion. Hey, more flowers. And little cups that are saying, I miss you, Paris. Maybe you guys are missing Paris. Well, we miss you too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, come back whenever. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna leave the, the covered passage to show you a very unique church. And then we will go to La Place des Victoires. So we go to church, it's Sunday, that makes sense. Exactly. And uh, what's this church about? This what's church is named Notre Dame des Victoires, which means Our Lady of the Victories. So it's one of the many Notre Dame in Paris. Yes, it's a basilica, actually. It's even more important than a church. It's a basilica. Okay. And, uh, so we're talking Roman Catholics? Too? Roman Catholic basilica, yes. And uh, popular and a very unique architecture because we will see it's a baroque. And Ooh, that's why I'm... Love, yeah, like more Italian style. Exactly. That's why I like to say to my guests when we are here physically, we are going now to Italy, like mm -hmm. Rome. And the place I'm taking you now, a lot of Parisians don't know it. It uh, used to belong to a monastery. You have a beautiful church. You, you, know, you know, Florent, you, you're doing a, a really great job at this because we are right in the center of Paris. We're still in district number one, district number two. And we, we see things that, you know, you don't see on your uh, uh, average tour. I think, actually, uh, let me refresh on, on my phone, but... I think somebody was just saying that um, she's been here 10 times and never, never uh, seen all these sites. Well, I tell you, even this place, a lot of people don't know. It's, uh, it's tiny, it's pretty nice. You have the church over there, that's uh, the, like an Italian church. It's a little, a little, a little plaza. Yeah. Called Plaza of the Little Fathers. Maybe you will explain to us what yes. this is about. Yes, and we have oh, a beautiful Italian-style church. It opened in 1740, and that church is very special. It's closed at the moment, but when you enter that church, you see it's famous for what we call 
ex voters. It's like a devotional offering or a votive uh, plate where people thank Mary for fulfilling their prayers. And usually in the churches in France, you have a few hundreds of these plates. Here in that church, you have the priest, a priest told me, we have 37,000 of these. 37,000. That means 37,000 people yeah. have offered to this church exactly. a marble engraved plate to say thank you. Yes. Wow. So, yeah, if you guys just join us, uh, well... The name of our name and the name of our channel tell you where you are. You know, it's my private Paris. By the way, guys, uh, it's, it would be really great if you haven't done it yet. If you subscribe to our channel, uh, this way we get to uh, have a little bit more publicity from uh, YouTube. So don't hesitate to like the video and subscribe to the channel. That's a big help for us. But back to our point, uh, my private Paris. Obviously, we are in Paris, but this really uh, looks like Roman churches, what we call the Baroque. But oh, I see that on the top there, there are the fleur de lis. So yes. you, you're you're told that you're back to back to France. But it's true, it's very rare, uh, Florent, to see churches of that style in uh, Paris. Paris. We, we, we have, have a lot of a, few. a lot of Gothic churches. Yes, but Baroque, not not that many. No, no, we have maybe three or maximum five. I know another one named Saint Paul Saint Louis. Yeah. But this one is really There's like the, the Val de Grasse also. Yes. Uh, yeah. And you were asking what means petit père. So literally, it means the the square of the uh, small fathers. It was the name, uh, the nickname of the monks who used to live here, because during the revolution, it was here a property of a monastery. Like yeah. during the revolution, before the revolution, the religious orders, churches, monasteries used to own more than half the, uh, of the size of Paris. More than 50% was owned by religious orders. Not bad, not bad. So we're going to go now. It's so beautiful, so quiet. All right. All Look right. at this light. This light is wonderful. It's yeah. perfect time for photographers. As a photographer, I can tell you it's a, one of the best lights you can get. It is. And you can do pretty much everything you want because you know you don't have to be shy. There's no one in the street. You can, uh, you can, you know, do your photo session uh, as if you were used to it. Because quite often, when people buy a, uh, a private photo session with uh, with you or yes. another photographer, it's the first time they have someone who professionally, you know, takes their photographs in the in the middle of the street. So it takes a bit of time. They're they're a bit shy, right, at the beginning. Yes, but. Uh... It's easy going, and then they're happy of their portraits. Good. Look at this place. It's a bakery. Okay, it's closed, but look since when it's opened. Since 1356. At the meal of the Virgin. So it's a shame we could do window leaking because they have wonderful eclairs. <laughs> but we can see actually all of their specialties. Wow, so the same bakery, which is named Le Moulin. Guys, that's the meal, the windmill of the Virgin. Of the Virgin. Bakery. Almost 700 years in business. I, well, that's what they pretend, but I couldn't find any proof. You, you mean that in Paris, some people, sometimes they say established in, 13, yeah. in 1356? We no, yeah, we have no proof. I was looking for any proof I couldn't find. But it's, uh, it's as if we, we were saying that we, my private Paris, we've been in business since 1896. That since 1896. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I founded the company in 1896. <laughs> so now, just wait here. Look at the name. You have a funny name here. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Let's switch. You have a name of a street, which is Rue Vide Gousset. Vide Gousset. Gousset is a former word that means pocket, and vide means empty. Street of the empty pockets. That was the street of the pickpockets. Imagine the men coming back from Palais Royal at the end of the night, little bit tipsy. It was a place where people would make their pockets empty. Because now it's, it's in the metro where it happens now, <laughs> but no longer in that street. But in the 1700s, that was the place of the pickpockets. And so you come back from a, a, a fun night out at the Palais Royal, a little bit tipsy as you nicely put it. Yes. You come back here and this tiny street, I guess, did not have lightning. No. Nope. So you're here in the dark and oops, 
your uh, pockets are a little bit lighter than yes. they were just a minute ago. All right. And now the cherry on the top. Wow, yeah. This way? Okay. Welcome to a place that is not so famous, but still beautiful because we can see one of the five royal square of Paris. That the less famous one, but this one, what is interesting, was not made by the king, was not built by the king, but at first by a man who admired the king so much. He was a marshal, he was a marshal named François de la Feuillade. He bought the land, he destroyed the private mansion, and very soon, the Bâtiment de Roi, an organization close to the king, they sent the best architect, Jules Ardouin Mansart, one of the architects of Versailles, to build this place, which you can see now, is like a ring. And that's very unique. Yeah, that's true. In, in, so it's uh, the only one like this in it's Paris. A, it's a round plaza. Exactly. Round plaza with, in the middle, of course, you have the triumph of the King Louis XIV. Can we get closer to the Yes, stadium? we can even cross. Uh, just, just being sure careful. We, we don't get the uh, run over. All right, we've made it, we've survived. So there's a beautiful bronze statue of King Louis XIV, you said? Louis XIV, you know, the Sun King. You know, he's a triumph. He's uh, dressed like a Roman emperor. Yeah. Remember that we saw the place where he grew up in Palais Royal. Yes. He became king at the age of five. This is meant to celebrate his victory against Holland in 1678. And the horse is rearing on his hind legs. That's a sign of triumph. The king on his head has a crown of laurels. That's a sign of triumph. But the original statue was destroyed during the French Revolution of 1792. This one was made in 1822. 1822. So 1822. after the French Revolution. After the French Revolution. Yes. After all the Napoleon era. Yes. And, and it's exactly like. Not exactly. One, but uh, no, similar. A new version. Okay. And then on the pedestal, there is a scene. You see uh, how the, uh, the people, his enemies, are now getting on the knees. Uh, right. So here is the king on his throne. Yes. And here is Holland. Holland, yes. So France was at war with Holland back then. Yes, so France was at war with uh, everybody pretty, pretty much uh, everyone, at the time yeah. of the Sun King. <laughs> but uh, this time, uh, yes, it was a victory. Wow, th this is this is a gorgeous statue. And, and you see it's pretty and, empty. And you're yeah, right. Not a lot of people. It is the perfect timing. The, the, the sun rays are hitting the bronze statue and the and the facade. It's just... Uh, I mean, thank you very much, Paul, for taking uh, us here. And the place I'd like to take you to, but sorry, I wrote many letters. They don't allow me to enter. At the end of that street, the street you see there, you yeah. have La Banque de France. Ooh, let's get, let's make let's, some money. Yes. The thing I'm, is, I'm not sure they, they keep the gold still in there. Well, actually, for the American following us, this is our Fort Knox. It doesn't seem so, but this place is the safest place in France. You have a bunker 28 meters on the ground, like wow. eighth floor, which is keeping the gold reserve of France. We're talking of 2000, nearly 2,500 tons of gold. Eight. So and, I, and, and you want us to film I want the it, fact yeah. that we're going to break it. And but they don't let me enter. Well, ju just before uh, we do that, we have a very uh, interesting question from Amy. Yes. She's saying, some of my best experiences in Paris involved informal conversations with Parisians. Do you have advice or tips on starting a conversation with locals in Paris? Yes. What you want to do if you want to talk to the locals, it's very simple. You go in a bistro or a cafe and you don't take your own table, but you stay at the bar. At, where the, counter, it's yes. actually, at the counter, where it's actually cheaper 
and you can start to talk to your neighbor, talk about the news. And it's something people like to do in the morning, drinking the coffee, eating a croissant, and just like, you know, not necessarily philosophy called uh, 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 messages. I mean, just, just like an ordinary talk, you know. And yes, you can do that. I would say so that a place to socialize is a cafe or uh, like a bistro. And, and what would be the, the best, uh, you know, it's yeah. not a pickup line, but, you know, the best starting line. If, oh, if, talk about the weather and complain about the government. I think it's going to be. <laughs> I think we, we have the golden uh, the golden tip here. So try to try your best French. You know. Yes. Or if you if you don't speak French at all, the the thing you should know is to ask if people speak English, because most people here yes. will speak English. But if you start speaking English straight ahead, I mean you know French is our native language, so you know it's it's a bit shocking and sometimes a little bit rude. So if you ask instead. You know, do you speak English? Or even if, better if you ask it in French, parlez-vous anglais? Then people will understand, okay, you're not French, so I need to switch my uh, language. And then you can start, what do you say? Complain about the weather and criticize the government? Exactly. That must be perfect. I think that's universal. It's not just us, the French. But it's true. If you want to start a conversation with a local, find a, a way to complain. <laughs> so back to Fort Knox. Back to Fort Knox, Banque de France, Bank of France. It has never been uh, stolen. I mean, they couldn't reach the bunker. Just to give you an idea, the safe entrance has a diameter of like 19 meters. So 19 meters. 19 meters, just the door of the safe. So it doesn't seem so, but it's one of the safest places in, in the world. But it's eight floor on the ground. Okay, well, let's try to knock and see if we can get in. No, oh, no, no, they don't respond work. to my letters, never. So, Bank of France, but I guess, you know, is this where they, they mint the, the coins? No, and, no, no, and, they used to this? mint the coin at uh, La Monnaie de Paris, which is a building located on the left bank of Paris. We're on the right bank and just next to the Seine River. So, this was just a bank. And the, the minting used to the of the coin used to be on the other side so, of the river. So it's kept here. And and it, it was funded under Napoleon, you said? Uh, no. No? Uh, no, no. I think it was uh, funded uh, later. A later. Bit later. The stock exchange we had was made under Napoleon. Yep. And uh, but uh, Banque de France is like actually in this location. It's a little bit uh, afterwards. Yeah. So behind. <laughs> sorry about that. Behind the Louvre and a few steps away from the beautiful uh, Place des Victoires. Yes. Where we're heading back. Uh, we're heading back to the Place des Victoires right now. Uh, this is actually the, uh, the grand finale of the tour. So I guess, you know, in the triumph of Louis XIV, the Sun we, King, the Sun King, you know, very humbling. <laughs> uh, we are going to... Uh, uh, find also a, a great location to, to say goodbye. Thank you to everyone. Uh, yes. we, we are what, in the first arrondissement? We still? are still in the first arrondissement. Yes, the first district of Paris. And, and would you say that this is a location where uh, you would, you know, you would uh, advise people to come here? Yes. Uh, to stay yes. around? Yeah, yes, because it's very Parisian. You're just not far from the Louvre, but as you can see, as we have seen together, it's authentic Paris. It's not touristy, and uh, you can find some nice address to eat. You know, you eat very well. You're not far from Les Halles, the former market of Paris. And yes, you can really find a perfect hotel, like in a nice location like this one, in and, a private mansion. And we're not too far from the uh, Montorgueil Street. The Rue Montorgueil is actually not very far, like maybe 10 minutes by walk, which is one of the best market streets, one of the six market streets of Paris. Yes. So not only you're close to the loop, you can walk to the loop pretty much in five, ten minutes. Yes. Uh, you have amazing shopping, not shopping mall, but shopping yes. street or gallery. Yes. Like the Galerie Vivienne, which is one of the 17 covered passages. You have beautiful gems like this Place de Victoire, where statues like this one and views you know, and colors uh, like the one we're offering you today. Um, so probably one of the lesser known central part of Paris. Yes. But one, definitely one of the most interesting. 
Well, thank you, uh, thank you, Florent. Thank, thank you, you, Bertrand. Thank you very, very much. Uh, we were live from Paris. It is uh, Sunday, July the fifth. I hope you guys have had a good time. If you uh, like our tours, uh, you start to know my uh, end of the tour uh, speech. But it's very important for us if you can help us and support our guides like Florent and our company. Uh, you know, make it through this summer, which would be a very uh, quiet, quiet, <laughs> uh, quiet summer. But come back. So uh, we know you'll be back. But in the meantime, if you want to leave a little tip on uh, PayPal, you have the link right here under the um, under the video. You can share the video. You can like it. You can subscribe to our channel. And I would like to uh, uh, tell you something that is a little teaser for next week. Because even though our name is My Private Paris, next week the live tour will be back on Saturday, but we will not do it from Paris. We will actually do it from the southwest of France, from the small town of Bayonne, which is where I was born. So I'm going to take my, uh, my camera, all the filming uh, equipment, and take you guys to my uh, original uh, hometown, Bayonne, at the Spanish border. And it will be our first tour ever uh, that far away from Paris. So I hope you will be here next week. Florent, merci beaucoup for all your uh, stories. We had a lot of comments. I haven't had time to read them all, but a lot of comments saying thank you for doing these tours. Thank I love you for all the watching. history. It's true that you know, you've know you brought these uh, tours to a level of uh, knowledge and precision that was unrivaled. So thank you very, very much. Thank you. And guys, see you next week from uh, Bayonne down 